So right now, Doug and I are getting ready to lower Christine down. We're gonna load it up on a truck and trailer and have it uh, go over and get dipped, it's ready. Uh, we gotta get that done because we're still running out of time for SEMA. That's moving along real quick. You wanna go down there and spot for me? Yeah. Good and Dougie. I'd love to. A little higher. walk along with it if you want to or yes, drive sir. along with it either way oh i want to ride in it all right i don't know about that <laughs> oh she might have a problem with that true that they're coming to get you barbara this week christine hooks up with a elephant will has a setback on a 66 charger Alyssa is forced to interrogate the ghouls and mark gets laser focused on dvds the unburied dead are coming back to life. As always, we have tons going on at Graveyard Cars. This week is no different. We just have some specific highlights that we want to get done. Our 1966 Dodge Charger factory 426 Hemi four-speed 354 Dana car, for those of you taking notes, is ready for paint. This car's been here for about four years. So we've got the engine, the transmission, the rear end. Everything is done. It just needs its paint. That would be happening today instead of tomorrow if it didn't have handprints all over it in the bare metal. So we've got to get that off of there and treated before he can do his final paint. My favorite baby, Christine, she's coming along nicely. Now we've already done a pre-fit on the engine and transmission. That's how the mounts got put in place where they belong so that we know that the engine will come in and set down. Since we did those modifications, we sent it out for powder coating. So now that the powder coating is done on Christine, what we want to get done this week is the engine and transmission setting on the frame and the chassis with the wheels and the tires, the full suspension, and mock that body down on it. We make sure that we have clearance out over that engine. Because if we don't, now's the time we're gonna have to do something about it. So the guys just showed up from Shop Crane to install the new system. It's gonna be able to cover the entire area of the east side of the machine shop. Hi, my name is Joe Bia. I work for Shop Crane. The first thing we did was we marked off the floor with chalk lines to make sure we had it square, et cetera, and, and marked the approximate location of the columns. Then we erected the eight, the eight columns and made sure they were plumb. Then we added the runways on both sides. There are six runways. And then once everything was up, we again checked everything for level and plumb, made sure everything was properly tightened down. And then the last step in the process was mounting the bridge on top uh, and then hanging the hoist from the bridge. One of the other things I'm looking forward to, uh, great guys that are out working on the system right now, but I haven't seen Tim in a long time. Uh, I get to see him at SEMA this year. We've been invited to come by their booth and say hi, so I'm looking forward to that too. Oh, I love it. Okay, here we go. Absolutely nothing. I love it, this is beautiful. Okay, here we go. We're rocking, baby. So I don't think there's anything more frustrating than getting up here and starting my day with finding out that the guys have been taking supplies without checking it out. So when I first get here, I clock in, and then I head upstairs to just kind of check over my area. Um, sometimes there's notes on my desk, um, what, what the guys need, and they're waiting for me to get here. So I want to make sure I take care of that. And then while I'm up here um, checking my notes, I also check the supplies area just to make sure um, there hasn't been anything taken that hasn't been checked out. Hmm. Where is my brake cleaner? So I found missing brake cleaner, which isn't surprising because that's always what I find missing. Um, Ezra loves that shit. I don't know what he's doing with it, but he has to take 12 cans at a time. And I do not understand it. I think at this point, I'm going to go down and talk to Will and have him confront Ezra about it because I've already talked to him three different times and it's not changing anything. I'm done. 
I'm so pissed. You're done I don't with what? understand what it takes, what it's gonna take to get Ezra to just grab one can of brake cleaner. What do I do? I already posted a sign. He's mm -hmm. the only one not following the sign. I've talked to him face to face, and then he goes up there and he grabs a whole case of it, which is 12 cans. We have 95 cars here. We've got huge deadlines. We've got a bunch of stuff to do. Now, if she wants to come out all pissy because a car is not done or we're behind, 100% valid, but brake clean, I just don't care enough about. Okay, take a deep breath. You have two problems. First problem is you said you're done. So you're quitting? You're done? No, I'm not quitting. So you're not I'm, done. I mean, technically just, you're not done. Can you just talk to Ezra yeah. for me? So, oh, hold on. You so, need to manage your guys better. I don't understand. I don't have the time to ride them so I can't like even that. Get a word like, Two things. You can't be done already, and don't put your hands on your hip because now you look all flustered me. Thank you. Is that better? <laughs> Thank you. That is better. Secondly, you're the boss. Yeah, so I this, know. This but all no comes one listens to me. Well, you're going to have to make an example of somebody. What would you do if they wouldn't take one can? Fire him. I can't go and just fire him. Well, then I guess you're not ready to be a boss. Dude. I oh, my know. God. You're no help. I don't even know why I come and asked you. You and me both. I don't know either. So, basically, it was pointless confronting Will. I... I'm not surprised. I don't even know why I went and asked him any to like begin with. That was stupid. And nice socks, dude. You're wearing your girl socks. Typically that is what happens. I don't know why I think that I was gonna get a different answer, but. Are you being nice or are you being mean? Those are your girlfriends? No, they're mine. Those are yours, you bought those? Uh -huh. God, shame. Yeah, I think the definition of a good manager is somebody who can relate really well with their employees. I think that's one of the first things. First day. Okay, do you remember when you told me to hire him? Welcome to hell. Uh, being a good manager means showing up to work every day, on time, being able to lead by example, and uh, making sure your guys are always efficient. I don't know exactly what makes a good manager, but I like to use examples. So, uh, Mark, for instance. You know, I've noted how he works with people, what he does for communication, uh, how he lays out tasks and makes sure that people stay on top of them. And then I make sure not to do any of those things. I think being able to keep the troops happy through comedy, as Sir David Brent probably said most eloquently, I'm a friend first, a boss second, probably an entertainer third. We've been working hard on Christine. So the frame got sent out. It was powder coated. Before it was sent out, we fixed, or I should say modified, the engine mounting area from its original 318 to be able to accept the elephant. So that is back. As Soon as it got back, Doug and I went to town on building out the suspension front and rear. Ready to put the Helifonte in? Uh-huh. Harry Belafonte, but it's a Helifant, so a Helifonte, I made it kind of French. Yeah. Isn't Halle Berry related to him? It's his daughter or something? What? Yeah. What can you say about Mopar? They were cool then, they're cool now. Who is going to come up with a crate engine that creates a thousand horsepower on pump gas? 950 foot pounds of torque. God, that's an evil engine, man. Who in the world will build 1,000 horsepower, 950 foot pounds, and then be able to go up to a gas station and say, fill her up? I think if you took a, a vote on which car in pop culture is the most evil car, it would have been Christine. Why not put the most evil engine in the world in the most evil car in the world? That's what made me think this is the perfect marriage. All right, last bolt, go ahead. Got it. Okay, we're gonna take this thing down now, move it outside. Once it's outside, we're gonna raise up the Plymouth on a lift on our bin pack, lower it down, find out if we have enough clearance between the firewall and the engine. And if we do, we can take the body back off again, start doing body work on it, and finish plumbing this bad boy out. What do you think? I like it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. I'll get the door. Alyssa? Hey. Alyssa? What is going on? Something happened. Oh, God. It's broken. What's broken? Can you come and look? Is everybody okay? Yeah, but whoa, I need whoa, you to come and on? look at this. Something, something happened. It quit working. Okay, yeah, 
Yeah. Can sure. you come and look come at on. it? Yeah. Thank you. All right, somebody jump on the front. Let's get this thing rolled out. Okay, so here's what we got. Um, all these spots you can just buzz down. Make sure you have gloves on. Those will be easy to address. All of these where you see it starting to come through, you're actually gonna have to take that Bondo back off. Yeah. It's a cool thing, it's a really clean car. There's not a lot to do. You guys didn't have to mud the whole thing to make it straight. God, clown, it really is. <laughs> so just ignore it. All right, all right. See, you just look, don't even engage with it. So we're just addressing the parts that show visible signs of rust. Yes. Um, right here, you see it starting to pop oh, through. Oh, so yeah. Just, don't, you just, talking about him, handprints? Just, just ignore him. Don't even listen to him. It's not <laughs> worth it. He just signed your check, that's it. So handprints! We're, we're going to peel <laughs> this back. You don't need to peel back. Always right. a telltale peel. sign of somebody that likes meat. Okay. <laughs> you might be okay, so you may just have to redo this section. <laughs> I smelled <laughs> ranch Dorito chips. See? It ain't funny, is it? She's Budweiser. Like, oh. Okay, that's a little funny. That yeah. might be true. <laughs> it was the dark of the moon on the right 6th of here. June and a Kenworth oh, right. yeah, wall. Some off. But the cool thing a is cab over Pete with a okay. reefer on and a but, Jimmy so Holland Hall. do that, you see it up here. Convoy, right? Um, okay. Just make sure from this point forward, any bare metal car that we have, we have gloves on. Okay. It's just the safest way to avoid yeah. any problems going forward. All right. Now let's put it in intelligible conversation. Uh, this is where you get the done. hand prints that you see on this car are the result of <sighs> doing body work without gloves on. I just told him. We as human beings, we sweat. Some people more than others. Does Doug sweat? You a sweater? Oh, he's Doug a sweater. never sweats. Oh, never sweat. Doug has never sweat one day in his life. He's a sweater. That's why I say he's not even from this place. You have to have the gloves on because otherwise this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna, and the thing about stuff like that is it can be real deceptive. It can come in. It can be on there and have not turned brown and rusted yet, but it's there. It's there. I've already told you. Like the dark of the moon on the 6th of June. Thank yeah. you guys. Go ahead so and what I was going to say was we'll just, be good. yeah, the meeting's not adjourned. Yeah, I'm the one that you. adjourns. I call We're, the meeting. No, it's over. They do a great job. This yeah. was just a little oversight. It was the dark of the uh, moon on the 6th of June and a Kenworth hauling log. A camper happening? repeat with a reefer on and a Jimmy hauling log. Thanks, guys. We were headed for Bear on I-10 about a mile out of Shaky Town. I said, Big mm -hmm. Ben, this here is the rubber duck. <laughs> We're about to put the hammer down. Hold on. He's pounding down. So while I was checking over my area, Doug interrupted me. And it was crazy the way Doug came in hot. Like, he was freaking out. I thought my dad maybe had a heart attack or one of the cars fell off a lift or something. But it just ended up being one of our pieces of equipment was not working. The basket won't go down so that I can get into it safely. Oh, and I need, I, I need see. to use this thing all the time. Well, what do we even use this for, though? I didn't even know we had a Howlett lift. I don't know what a Howlett lift is, but apparently now it's my problem. It's just a really handy tool, and I use it a lot. You know, I think Doug is a little bit too upset over this. This is definitely not something to get stressed out about. And we need to get well, it fixed. Does it still go up? It goes up, but it won't come down. Well, it's hard for me to get into the basket. We have a little step stool that we could, you know, you could put right there and help you get in just for the time being. Um, because I don't know, I've got a lot of stuff to do. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to this right away. I heard you were the shop manager now. Well, yeah, but... OK, fine. You can take okay. care of it? Yeah. So basically, I have to cancel the rest of my day, and I have to take care of this frivolous thing. So I've decided to call Aaron down to my office. Uh, Aaron's with me all the way back in the beginning days. He'll tell you that he like co-created Graveyard Cars. But whatever, if that's what he's got to tell himself, it's fine. I want to talk to him about Blu-ray sales. I want to talk to him about DVD. I got things on my agenda. DVDs, Blu-ray preferably, wondering where they're at, what seasons we're up to. We had season one. You were going to get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. I've got a answering machine full of messages asking about DVDs. 45 messages. You want to hear what I have to go through in the morning? Not really. Where's your DVD? Where's your DVD? Where's your DVD? You can. Mark, you gotta keep running your mouth, you fat 
Uh, that's not it. This is it here. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, I just saw your dance, mate, and you absolutely freak <laughs> Don't dance on the screen. It doesn't suit you. You're missing you're the point. So why did you bring me in here? I want my DVDs. I want a plan. I want a business plan for it. I okay. want it in production. I don't want excuses. So how about I have some DVDs to sell at Christmas time? Because old Satan Claus is coming, Jimmy, and he's just getting stronger. What movie's that? I, I don't know. The Last Boy Scout, man. <laughs> you can't pull. Hi. My name's Alyssa and I'm from Graveyard Cars. Um, who am I speaking with? So I'm out here with our Hallett lift, which is broken. Uh, it's, I mean, is it broken? It just won't go down the last two feet. I'm hoping that if I call the diagnostic line for Hallett, that they'll be able to help me and we won't have to have anybody come out. Hi, James. I am so sorry to bother you. See, I don't really see where this is my problem. This is Will's side of the shop, okay? It's out there in the body shop. I manage him and he manages everybody else and the equipment, right? That's how it should work. On top of which, I think Will already knows who broke the Hallett lift, so it'd be a lot easier for him to figure it out than it is for me. I don't feel it's my responsibility to make sure that piece of equipment's up and going. Her being the boss out here, those, these are the little details that come up that she needs to be on top of and nobody else but her. ROSs, what are you talking about? You said a number. Okay, wait, now I went back, so what do I do again? So what Lissa doesn't quite understand is that lift, the Hallett lift is beyond amazing. You know, just for the little things that you take for granted. Why she does her job and does great at it, she just misses the details. You know, if we have a light go out or the camera crew needs to shoot something high or any type of maintenance that requires something taller than a ladder, we use it for. So until she's really here and actually sees it being used, she can't really grasp how important that piece of equipment is. I know that my dad uses it for a lot of things, like changing light bulbs, uh, looking at the engines that are out on the rack, and then he has Doug spot him grabbing the cars off of the space savers. So I know that we actually use it and it's important, so as much as I hate it, I'll do it. So that's a 0109. This doesn't even make any sense to me. I'm sure that he's doing a great job. I just don't understand it. It's like a freaking PlayStation code or something. I'm not a gamer. You lost me. Where are we at? Where we left off is that he got a number of error codes. So I have to go around the shop and figure out who broke it so then I know how it broke, so then we can fix it. I mean, this just made my day 10 times longer. I just got back our 1966 Charger from our body guys. We had that little mishap where the car started to rust and it was underneath the Bondo. They did a great job, uh, stripped it back down, redid a lot of the body work where they needed to. We've combed over the car, made sure that metal looks perfect. It is in the booth currently, and it's ready to start getting the primer on it. I don't mind wearing a pink suit. I do all the time. You guys just never show that footage. But I always have my gloves on, always have my fresh air on, and always have a paint suit on. You guys just don't ever show that part. Uh, this is the first time we've done a 66 Charger. It's pr pretty pretty exciting. It was what makes it really cool. It's a color we haven't done. It's kind of a nice champagne color. On top of the fact that's really gonna offset nice with the chrome that goes on this car. To top it off, it gets a Hemi. So I think all those things thrown together, this car is a long time overdue, and it's really going to be just, the payoff on this car is gonna be huge. So I'm excited to get it pushed through the shop and get it over to Justin. I got a quick question for you. Yeah. Have you seen anybody on the Hallett machine messing uh, around on it? I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, well, if you see anybody on it, if or if you heard, let you know yeah, sure. let me know, okay? Because it's not working, so. So no one knows anything about the Hallett lift. I've gone around, asked everybody if they know anything at all, if they've seen anybody even around it, even looking at it, and no one knows anything. Do you know the last person that used the Hallett machine? You know, that lift thing? No. Okay, have you seen anybody use it or anything? I don't, couldn't even guess why. Absolutely no progress at all. Kind of like my whole job. Our <laughs> no. new machines broke? Yeah, I know, that's, oh. so I'm trying, just trying to figure out, you know, who's the last person to use it. And you're the boss. So along Correct. with the other stuff you gotta figure out, you can figure this out. 
that's what I'm doing. Alyssa has nothing pressing, really, you know, as far as day-to-day -day, day -day operations go. So when little problems like this come up, this is where it's gonna be really helpful for her to take over and just see that everything gets fixed so everybody that's on the floor can just continue working on the cars. But you, you never saw anybody on mm -hmm. it? Okay, thanks for being absolutely no help at all. Yeah, pretty much. Appreciate that. you. You're the boss, you can go figure out, go yeah, ask George or Keep whoever else. Keep saying that, I'm the boss. So I've watched a lot of SVU, and when they want answers, they pull people in by themselves. So that's what I've decided to do. I'm gonna start with Adam. I'm gonna pull him up here, and hopefully with nobody else around, he'll feel more comfortable telling me what really happened to the Hallett. Hey. Hey, buddy, what's up? Want to give you a heads up. I uh, had a talk with Mark, and he is on the uh, DVD rampage again. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So DL's been here since season two, so he's pretty plugged in on the, uh, the, the drama of Mark's sort of roller coaster interest in DVDs. So uh, he'll be a good person to talk to for, you know, not just commiserating, but um, helping me figure out exactly where we left those things off. I wanted to find out if you handled the last quote or if I handled the last quote, because it's been a long time and I don't remember. And I know Matthew had it at one point, so I'm trying to find the most recent one we have. Yeah, I think you guys handled the last one because I was back in 2014 when we were doing season five. Okay, I think I was after that on, yeah. Okay, the, the weird thing about this, you know Mark's always saying in a twist of irony and he's using irony incorrectly? Yep. This is actually really ironic because he's accusing us of losing him money because we haven't got the DVDs out. And yet, it's because he starts and stops the DVD project over and over and over again that we don't actually remember where we were at. We had to comb back through all the material. It takes us three or four times as much time. So we're actually spending more money to produce a DVD. So that's actually real irony. It's a sick game. Yeah. Good talk. Yeah, thanks. So I wanted to bring everybody up here separately and talk to you guys in private in light of what has happened to our Hallett machine. Okay. As you know, it's broken. I don't know who did it. I went around and initially talked to you guys downstairs and I just felt like no one wanted to say anything because you have someone nearby. So this kind of, I feel like this gives you the opportunity to really let me know what happened. Well, I don't want to be a narc, but. Well, I mean, it's not you prison. Know, you know, I know, I mean, but. It's uh, not about that. We're trying to run a shop here. I you, hear you. you. Know? I know. We're not going to um, get anybody in trouble. I really don't anything. know anything about it. I've heard a little bit, a little bit about it, but uh, I don't know anything about it. Um, at all, though? Yeah, what's in it for me? Well, I, I can't do a bribe. Like, once again. How about a new porta potty out back? Why do you want a porta potty out there? We already Because it's, it's nice to have one out there. All right. I give you a porta potty out back, like you want, and you tell me what you know. You think you could do that, though, huh? I, I know I could do that, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know anything about it. So bringing Adam up here was pointless. Uh, so far, he knows nothing, and the only thing he wants is a porta potty. <laughs> porta potty. So I know everything that's been going down on down at the shop? Well, no, you don't know everything, because Will told me not to tell you anything. So. Bombshell, Adam told me that Will said to all the guys to not tell me anything that's going on in the shop. What the f is that, Will? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll get you that porta potty if you tell me everything that Will told you not to tell me. I'm uh, trying to hunt down some emails here. And so I'm trying to go back and figure out where we last left off with DVDs, find our most recent quote. I think I've got a beat on where we're at with the DVDs. I think I was the last person to, to interact with the DVD replication house. So I just need to search my emails. Hopefully it doesn't go that far back and uh, figure out what the last quote was. Hopefully they're still in business. So, so Mark does this uh, every few years he gets this crazy idea that we have to have DVDs. So we did the first season on DVD, and that was great, that worked, and it would have been great if we had just gone on to the second season and the third season, but see, the second season was longer and bigger, it had more discs, and so it was more expensive to produce, and you know, Mark kind of wanted to see how the first season sold, and uh, so we, we, he put the brakes on it. And then he forgets that he puts the brakes on it, and then a couple years later he says, why don't we have DVDs? 
And so we go back to this again and we get the ball rolling, we're getting quotes. And then we go to him with the numbers and he's like, well, how was the first season selling? Let's wait on it. Let's just wait on it a little bit and then rinse and repeat. So this has been going on for years. Okay, so we got a four-speed transmission in here from Pass On Performance, and we're gonna unbox this thing and see if we can install it. One of the great things here at Graveyard Cars is everyone here is pretty diverse. You know, while we're working on the 66 Charger, we got the other guys over there putting the transmission to the engine. So when the car is done with body and paint, I can get it over to assembly, and we can get the drivetrain in it and start putting the whole car together. Good. Get this stuff off here. Perfect. <laughs> Adam dropped a bombshell. He told me that Will said to all the guys to not tell me anything that's going on in the shop. So I'm gonna go down and confront Will. That's a if I'm being honest, and uh, I wanna know what he has to say about it. Are you kidding me? What the f are you doing out here? It was dirty. I'm looking everywhere for Will. Where the hell is he? He's out washing his car out back on the clock. Are you clocked in right now? What's the correct answer? So Alyssa gets all butt hurt because of what I've told the guys is because I am still their boss. They don't need to really talk to her about anything that goes on. Um, she wants to be all high and mighty with, I'm gonna be involved in this and that, but she's really still not involved in her day-to-day -day operations. So I've kind of instructed the guys, you know, if Alyssa comes down, just nod your head yes, just kind of amuse her for a little while, like you do a five-year-old. You do that, then she just leaves. How am I supposed to run the shop if none of the guys feel like they can come and talk to me? I try to take a page out of Mark's book and treat her like I do all of my guys. You know, you gotta beat them down a little bit and then you reward her. And as you reward her, it's like, it's like a dog that does a good trick. You know, you, you reward them in small increments. So before you know it, you've built her back up and she realized what it was like to be down. It doesn't want to go back there. So then she behaves good. I'm the leader and that's it. I don't need anybody working against me. Okay, so are we, are, do you understand that? I understand I'm not what a part you're of saying, any... I just don't agree with it. I'm gonna get back to clean my car. You go you check my time card. I'm gonna go, you go check your time you clock. You better uh, hope you're clocked out. I, I, not, I, I'm writing that ass up. I, and I can't, I hope late. you write that ass up. Uh, hi, yes. Uh, so fortunately, I found the emails I was looking for and I didn't have to dig back too far. In other words, I didn't have to go back to my old email to find these. Okay. Um, well, I have a quote I kind of want to follow up on. And I got to say, like, after looking at the price that they quoted us, I mean, yeah, no wonder that ship's going down. All right, thank you. Huh. I like that. Wait for that to come in and uh, forward that to Mark. And uh, then we'll probably be sitting on this project for another three years. I'm just thinking about my day and everything that I've had to deal with. I'm just taking it all in, it's a lot. Um, yeah. Here's my day in a nutshell. Doug has a heart attack. How it broke. Can't figure out who broke it. No one will give me answers. Then I find out that Will went around and told everybody to not tell me anything. So basically I need a break at this point. I need to like, just get out of here, clear my mind, grab a coffee and kind of reset. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna do a white chocolate ice breve okay. with a uh, regular milk instead of chocolate milk. Thank you. Wow, that was quick, thanks. Thank you. Oh, perfect, look at this, this is perfect. I don't know what to do about Will. I need the guys to listen to me and not Will. What if I get Will, I pull Will up, okay? Write him up, get his attention. And then I get him on my side. And then we're a team, a team where I'm the boss, but still a team. And then we go down together and talk to the guys. I think they'll talk to me if he's with me. So I uh, printed off all the paperwork put it together, and you know, I will bet you that somewhere in a drawer that Mark has forgotten about is the exact same paperwork from three years ago. But nonetheless, I'm gonna go down there, give it to him, let him look at the price, and uh, have a little uh, deja vu all over again. DVD sales. Yes. 
And Blu-ray, yes, for both. This, and that's gonna be for the DigiPack. Take a look at this. Information is power. How much a unit, that's what I wanna know, and how many discs does it take to make it? We're talking Blu-ray, Graveyard Cars. Yes, all right, right. Blu-ray, DigiPack per unit. <laughs> Thanks, but no, the original quote that I sent you so was, you the the, was the one that we got before, which was 9,000. For, for a pack. DVD? Yeah. I don't think we're gonna sell many for 9,000. No, 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 that's the, that's the block. I what appreciate, listen to me, I appreciate you, but I'm gonna have to respectfully say, I think it's a bad idea. Times are changing, we got, we got streaming now, right? Let me tell you, my friend, where I believe the future is. Okay. Cornhole. What the f it's a very popular game. It's getting more popular all the time. You have some great big cornhole boards like that made and you put graveyard cars and all of us little characters. And like you make the hole right there, like maybe a piston or something like that. And you got to throw it in there. One, maybe it's another loyal fan telling me what a superb job I'm doing. I'd like to show I have a few cars of my own. You guys got to be a little more respectful of your customers and your family. Wrong number. Uh, we've had our setbacks on the 66 Charger, primarily because of my helper. He got his body work done, it looked good, but we had rust coming through. So basically we've had to strip the car down, redo it with gloves on. The body work looks great. We've primed it to perfection. We got our pass on transmission married up to the engine. So we're good to go there. So once I roll the car over, we're able to get the drivetrain installed in the car. The car at this point, I'm getting ready to spray this gorgeous champagne color that I have not done yet. So I'm very excited to get this car in the booth, get it sprayed and see what this thing looks like. You know, with all this management discussion going on right now at the shop, the one thing you have to take a step back and ask yourself, over the past week or two, what has Alyssa started and finished in that two weeks? What has Mark got done? And now ask yourself this, what have we gotten done over here at the body shop? Need I say more? <laughs> All right, so Doug and I got the engine and transmission mounted into Christine's chassis. The reason it's behind us right now is we need to set the body down onto the chassis exactly where it's gonna set on the cushions, on the mounts, so we can find out if we have enough clearance. I wanna know now if we have to do anything. I wanna find out now if the Silver Sport transmission doesn't hit the pinch weld where the firewall meets the floor. So this is just a pre-fit of the body because if this fits, we're able to take the body back off, get it on a rotisserie and start replacing panels on it and finish plumbing out the chassis. What do you think of that, Dougie? Uh, Dougie. Sounds like a plan. So I'm gonna have you lower the car down. I'm gonna watch for clearance. We've already done some measuring to, we're probably pretty close, but if you look right here at these uh, body mounts, these physically have to go through these holes right down here. That's the alignment. But right now, we've got it what looks to be lined up that way. It's kind of like putting in the K-member. So when we're doing this dry fit of the body over the frame, keep in mind, folks, I'm a unibody guy. I work on the 66 to 74 Mopar stuff. So this is a little out of my wheelhouse, pun intended. So if that thing comes down right, I know this is gonna be close to the firewall, just like it was in our Superbird. The, that cooling neck that comes off the back of that supercharger, it, it goes back inside quite a ways. So are you ready to try that? I am ready. All right. I think it went really well with Will and I. Um, it ended with he was fine with the write-up, he understood, and then we left together and actually went downstairs and talked to all the guys. <clears throat> all right, well, let's see if Justin knows anything. Well, you go ahead and leave. You know, I, I got the write-up, whatever, but the end result at the end of the write-up is that she wants to work together as a team. So Mark's way of beating people down and bringing them back up, which I'm doing the same exact thing with Alyssa, seems to be working quite well. Do that angry <laughs> too. I'm not angry. Hey, Justin. Hey, what's up? Um, so now that we're on the same page, same team, working well together, we're able to come down as one and go around and question the guys and actually figure out what happened to the list. Now, last time I told, I told all you guys, don't talk to her. So if you act, so that's all gone now. So we're a team, we're working together, so. Judas. You can go ahead. No, I haven't heard Careful who you follow, okay? Yeah. Anyways. Please so you have tell no me idea. next time, don't listen to Will when it comes to <laughs> that kind of stuff, yeah, because I'll, obviously I'll this is what know. happens, right? Yeah. So, okay, but you don't know? No, I haven't. You don't even, I okay. Okay. Anything. He doesn't even know. So we have a full camera crew here on staff 24 seven. 
we have surveillance cameras. So it really wouldn't be hard if Alyssa just thought, hey, what's the best way to find out? Go talk to the camera guys. Go ask them to see footage of our security tape. And then you'll probably find out who did it. Hey, Steve. Hey, how's it going? Feeling good? Oh, just... Tell me what you know about the Hallett machine, okay? Well, I, I got your that. ringleader here now. You can well, tell me, be honest. <laughs> well, I don't really know what's going on with it. But he's here with me. You can tell me. If, if, there, if you know something, you can tell her. No, I don't. I'm okay. Sorry. What are you looking at me okay, for? Well, then, whatever. Okay, he doesn't even know Thanks, either. Steve. Sorry, I couldn't help. We went around. We asked everybody. Nobody knows anything. And this is what I told her before we even took the time to ask everybody. Nobody knows. And it really isn't that big of a deal to the guys that work here in the shop. You know who broke it? No. Okay. See? That was simple. Damn it. No one you knows. You that extra fluff work. <laughs> fluff work. You gotta scare them. <laughs> then they'll tell you the answer. I cracked myself up with that. So at the end of the day, Alyssa was able to see what a good manager I actually am. I have a close-knit team. They don't tell on each other for anything. And when you work against me, you just get nowhere. But I've beat her down enough to where she's ready to work with me and she actually gets the guys to open up and be more uh, part of the team. And she'll find out that moving forward, it's gonna be a lot easier for her. Okay, why don't you go ahead and start lowering it down. I'm really looking forward to putting the body shell down on the, on the frame itself. And my biggest concern, does it fit? Is the engine, those super tall third generation Hemi's gonna have an interference problem with the firewall? Because if it does, we have to decide right then, we can't change our mind on the engine, if it doesn't fit, we're either gonna modify the firewall or we're gonna modify the frame. Both of them are gonna set us back. Stop right there. Literally, look at that clearance between the top of that rib and the back of that manifold. Oh my gosh. A millimeter? <laughs> That's pretty good, okay. So I learned from the guys that no one actually knows what happened to the Hallett lift at all. So this whole entire thing has just been a waste. I never thought about the production crew. I only asked the guys in the shop. So I'm gonna head upstairs and talk to Aaron and see if he knows anything. Hey, Aaron. Oh, hey. What are you doing? All right, so I'm wrapping up my day and uh, yeah, out of the blue, Alyssa comes to my door. Do you have a second to chat? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yep. So Alyssa wanted to know if I had any idea why the whole lot lift might be broken. I think I have an idea. Keep going, this is looking really good. That's it. Look at that. We're on? Yep. So does my board go uphill or downhill? Um, downhill. Right there's level. Do you own a level? Yeah, I uh, see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Yes, I own a level. I own several of them. Six foot one, eight feet one. We use them all the time in the body shop. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are gold. In this application, I didn't need a level. I used the word level and I'm sorry for that. Gold, Jerry, gold! <laughs> Seinfeld. All I wanted to achieve was to have the board pretend to be the bottom of the hood. That's all I wanted. So when I was saying level, I didn't mean level to the world. I meant level with the car and have the trajectory go straight out so I knew if I had clearance between the two. That fits really nice. So we're not gonna be able to use these manifolds. Remember we were talking about with that frame clearance by the time we put the gear in there, it's gonna have an interference. You can't just bolt a fender on it and the hood on it. You have to put the inner fenders on it, the core support back in it, which we didn't even have done back yet. So to be able to put the sheet metal on it and have a 100% pure dry fit was impossible. That's the reason behind the board, okay? Are you still optimistic about SEMA? We got what, like 80 days? That's more time than we had for the little dead wagon. We'll make it, we'll make it. I guarantee we'll make it. We need to find somebody to build us a radiator for this thing. Well, at this point, I have no idea exactly what our cooling capacity is going to be and what what's going to fit and what's not. So in all likelihood, I'll have to have a custom radiator made for it. That, folks, is what happens when the sun is shining on you. The sun shines on a dog's butt once in a while, and it just shined on us. Right, Dougie? Yep. Hey, Dad. Just need... What you looking at? It's a Charger 500. Don't bring that in, please. We're at capacity, no more cars. Shoot. So 
Have you heard that the Hallett lift is broken? The whole lot? I have heard through the grapevine that it has a uh, problem. Yeah. So I just want to know, like, do you know what happened to it? The whole lot? Yeah. I have no idea. Probably one of the monkeys out there. Have you been out there and watched them work? Well, They're always screwing around with something. They broke the pressure washer. I just want to show you something. You were the last person. And it's this. Oh. That's you. Yeah, so. that's. Yeah, I'm not really surprised. That sounds like something my dad would do. I just thought he was done doing that now, so. I see what you're doing. Okay. Dad, this well, is Well, I doubt very much, I doubt very, well, first of all. Remember, like, I'm doing a dance move, so if that's embarrassing, that why don't you call Michael stuff. Jackson and tell him to stop he doing dance moves? He was good. Moves. Yeah, not. well, that's good, too. That's, what the is that? It's called the super thrust. You I came assaulted up with it. I the Howlet, and you broke it, and now anything. I have to fix it. And okay, it's, well, why are you in here talking look, to me when you should be out there fixing it? Can you just not I do don't that need anymore? a blow-by-blow -blow report on what gets broken around here. If I did, I'd never leave my office. So I'm going to make a note and stick it on the machine of things you can do and things you're not allowed to do on the machine, as stupid as that is, but I guess that we need to have that for everybody. Can we just agree on something? Can you please not, like assault any more of our pieces of equipment. Go out and find out who did it. Radio video. On top of that, you know what? I'm gonna let Hallett know this is how you're using Boogie with lift. a briefcase. I don't think they're gonna like that very much. I didn't give that to you. Go live to in break. the disco. God, I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. Forget about the rat race. <clears throat> Bye Dad. I'm very proud of Alyssa. She did a great job in the case of the whole lot, right? She had a piece of equipment that allegedly was not working and she went around here and found out who had their hands on it? When was the last person that used it? What was it used for? She did a great job of sleuthing. What she ended up determining after her crack shot investigations is that there was nothing wrong with the unit at all. Oh, What's I was looking up? for this thing. I gotta fix it. How'd you get in there? Like this? Yeah, like that, exactly. Of course I go out there and I see Ezra on there. That's probably where he's been pilfering all the brake cleaner. He probably fixed the machine with it. The unit wasn't broken. I didn't break it by doing my magic hip thrusts, which can't really elaborate on, but in some situations it can break things. In this particular case, the only thing that was broken was Cousin Dougie, which if she listened to my stories and quit thinking I'm making them up, she would realize that his dogs ain't all barking. One day I walk out of the garage on South 4th Street. He's out there in the front yard with a 22 shell in his hand and a match. And he's holding the match underneath the 22 shell. I said, what you doing? He says, well, I want to see if it'll blow up. Well, Deb, by the time you find out if it'll blow up, and it really does, it's going to take your face off. Right? No, I don't, it's just a 22. <laughs> okay, well, you do that experiment all on your own. I'll see you later. I turn around, started to walk back in the house, and I hear pop, and then scream. His whole face. All of his hairs are burned back, singed back, so it just looks like he's got a really tight afro. And he had that little beginning hairs of a mustache all balled back up again. And his face glowed like he'd put armor all on it, right? He was all shiny. It was shrapnel all over his face. But it, he's right, in one way, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a 44 Magnum Automag, the world's most powerful handgun, Clint Eastwood. It was a 22 shell. But how many guys are gonna blow up a 22 shell in their own hand just to see if it works? That, that's not right. Something wrong, you know, he zigged when he should have zagged. My mom made sure I always zagged.